And this is the 40th edition of the Nike Zoom Pegasus. <laughs> Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we take a detailed look and review at the Nike Zoom Pegasus 40. I can't remember what was the last one that we reviewed. I wanna say it was the 36, for me at least. 37. Now I did not love those. I didn't love the fit. It was way too narrow of a shoe. I like the cushioning and things like that, but I just remember the fit not being great. I read the product description on these while they were available for members exclusive access. I believe that they should be available for everybody now, but reading the description of them, I was just like, hmm, these sound a lot better than the last one that I had tried. I skipped all the rest of them because of my previous experience. And I'm happy to say that I'm pretty happy with these so far. So first things first though, they do come in their recyclable box, but they they did come in an actual shipping box, which I think negates the use of this. I really have a not a problem with the move to zero thing. I have a problem with the way it's implemented. It's not a true move to zero. It's like baby steps. Inside of this box, it literally says this is a shoe box, but it's more than that. This is an all-in-one storage, shipping, and return box, which helps reduce the amount of material that we use. It's made from 90% recycled material. A shoe box that does a lot with less. So I, I do agree with that. And I think it's cool that they're trying that. I just am like, if this is supposed to be the shoe box and the shipping box and why was it shipped inside of another box it just is weird it's also strange because they keep moving things to zero and then adding more stuff and you could have done away with all of these things and been a little bit more i guess sustainable and then my only real issue with the whole shipping package and stuff which i actually thought was cool i just think it's unfortunate that it happened to my pair is that they do come with these little foam pads or whatever to i don't know like protect the shoes or something but some of the foam got glued to my shoe and now it's just there does it bother me mm. I mean, for this particular shoe, no, because this is a shoe that I bought with the intent of just simply wearing them casually and stuff like that. But if this was a retro shoe, like an Air Jordan or something like that. But overall, I think that the concept of move to zero is a good one. I just wish that they would go all in and stop like messing around, like truly move to zero or stop advertising it. Do it slowly and quietly, like if that's the way you wanna do it, because otherwise it's just confusing. Now, this is again, the Pegasus 40. I really love the way that these look. This particular colorway is a women's colorway. I think that the men's colorways suck. I don't know why, but they just are not good. All of the promo images that I had seen of the shoe previously were of this colorway. So when I went to go use that members access thing and buy the sneaker, I was like, where's this one? And it was over in the women's section. I was a little bit worried that the fit would be messed up for me because sometimes the women's shoes are supposedly built on a more narrow last. I'm happy to say that these just fit awesome. So I, I really like the way that they feel. Look at that traction, man. The traction looks awesome. It's a lot more rubber coverage than we've seen previously on like select models. I think one of the most recent one was those stupid bouncy ones. Like they were probably the most comfortable as far as bounce and squish goes from a Nike branded shoe that I've ever tried. I just can't remember what they're called, but we'll do the thumbnail thing. It's somewhere over here. I think they were like the Invincible Run 3s. Bingo. But anyways, I really like the way that this looks. I like the way that it's implemented. I do wish that they did have select sections. I said this in that other review too, where they had more durable rubber in select high wear areas. I just think that that would be a good move, mostly in the forefoot area where the rubber is thinned out a little bit. I think that that could have been a more durable rubber. Now they also implemented a couple of uh, key features, one of which is the webbing. So that allows for the shoe or the rubber itself to stretch, really move really well or freely without adding a lot of weight. And then all of the sections that you see in between all of the rubber where it's all white and everything that is the foam midsole and again all of that reduced rubber reduces weight adds flex so you get a more like snappy and responsive ride now one of the main reasons why i was drawn to this one is because of the product description so when i go onto the nike app and go underneath the product details the cushioning states medium which i really appreciated that they actually did that it also says responsiveness is high uh, it even details support says that it's neutral so i was really interested because of the medium cushioning because when i walk around something that's high cushioned like that other shoe, that, that really bouncy one. It messes with my ligaments and my Achilles and my tendons and stuff. It really stresses them out for some reason. So I need something a little bit more neutral, a little bit more firm, I guess you could say. So that's why I wear a lot of Air Jordan 1s and a lot of like older retros because they're hard bottoms and they don't aggravate everything, but they're not as comfortable underfoot. They don't have a lot of cushion. So I was hoping that this shoe would be kind of like a balance in between that. It kind of is and it kind of isn't. Like that's where I'm a little confused. Maybe it's because of that other run 
running shoe, but basically this being medium cushion, I just found surprising because the midsole itself is React, which is some of their best foams. So like, I was kind of like, okay, so you got React there, you got a four foot and heel Zoom Air unit, and that's medium cushion? To me, that sounds awesome. So I just was surprised. Again, maybe it's because of the other shoe with that other foam where that's like high cushion. Maybe that's what they consider high now. I'm not really sure. All I know is that when I put them on, I was still kind of like, I don't know, it's a lot of cushion underneath my feet. I really hope that it kind of like firms out a little bit. React does bottom out. So maybe that is one of the things that will happen and in turn making it a little bit more neutral for me. One of the things that I will say that I noticed just from trying them on, I remember this in that other one too, the 37. And I believe the tooling's fairly similar in all of the other models afterwards. So the 38, 39, and now the 40. But it's right here where it says Zoom Air. It's just got this weird little like rounded piece where the midsole sculpt is kind of like flares out and then tucks in right there. And then the rubber starts. That's one of the things where if I were to be running in this, which I'm not, but if I were, that's one of the things that I think would be like a cautionary aspect of the footwear because that right there could cause a little bit of ankle issues or instability and stuff, especially if you're going from like an elevated surface onto, you know, a lower surface. So if you're going from say a sidewalk and then you're just bouncing over to the road real quick and then maybe going back up. So to me, that's something where if you're an under pronator or what they call a supinator, if I'm saying that correctly, where you are a four foot or heel striker, but on the outsides, the lateral sides of your foot, that could cause an issue. I know that you personally are one of those runners. And so if you were to, I think you did run in the 37, right? I tried to, they were so tight. Okay, so- Because the... remember they were tight on you and then I have a wide foot, so they were pretty unbearable. I just know looking at those shoes, they would be a no-go for me because I would be running on the foam within a matter of weeks. I would oh, just, because of this thin area. I would just wear it out in yeah. that area. That's my highest stress zone. So again, extra durable rubber in that area would be a benefit. And then also widening it out just a little bit. I don't think that it needs like a true outrigger, like what a basketball shoe would have, but having a wider base uh, that doesn't tuck in all weird, especially with the foam being react, it is soft. It's not medium. Medium to me is like a good polyurethane. This feels like a lot of cushion still. So when you are compressing it, it will compress obviously. And again, if you're going from an L elevated surface to a lower level. That's the only thing where I'm just like, just be careful. You could roll your ankle or tweak it or have some sort of instability while you're transitioning from one level to the next. But if you run neutral, like, you know, heel forefoot or whatever, or midfoot forefoot, or if you're an over pronator basically where you're doing the opposite. So instead of being on this side, you're on the medial side, then that's obviously gonna be a non-issue for the shoe. But I'm just saying, be careful. That little area is a little tippy. Even for me, just casually, I was like, ooh, that's weird. Now the upper is where I think the shoe really has an upgrade at least based off of the last model of the Pegasus line that I've personally used. The shoe itself, the last was just really, really tight. The upper was not great. And even the Invincible 3 has an upper that is just kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. It just wasn't great. You know what I mean? Like for as good as the cushion and the platform felt, the upper material was kind of crispy and weird. And this one right here feels way different. I absolutely love it. This to me reminds me a lot of the Ultra Boost, which I think is really awesome. It doesn't have a lot of stretch or anything like that because I don't think that this is a true knit. This feels more like almost like an engineered mesh, but basically it feels very comfortable on foot. It's not tight and restrictive, especially in the forefoot area. That was another thing is that my running size is usually different than my casual size. I went true to size with these, which I would recommend casually. If you are running in the shoe, I still think you might be able to go true to size and be good because I can like splay my toes in there no problem because the upper is way more forgiving than the previous models that I personally used. The tongue is also really cool. It's very very airy, very lightweight and all that stuff. So a lot of breathability throughout the entire shoe. I actually put my phone in there with my flash on and it was really dope to see all the structured layers, all the ventilation layers. I absolutely love seeing that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that too, maybe you'll like that shot. It's beautiful. But that's basically how they feel. They feel very nice in the sections that they're supposed to. So uh, right here at the midfoot, the eye stay area has actually internal bands. So like what you don't see is this whole felt material wraps over and then becomes the eye stay, but then it keeps going into the strobal area, which is the footbed essentially. And it does that on both sides so that when you lace the shoes up, it feels like fingers are hugging your feet down onto the platform and it feels awesome. And then you get all of that wiggle room in the forefoot. And so you don't feel 
cramped or tight or like your feet are gonna explode out of the shoe. So that's why I was saying true to size should work for most people. My only concern is that if you do go up half a size, which is traditional for most runners, you may have some heel slip area because even true to size, I could feel it just a little bit. Yes, you can tie them all the way in the back. You can do a runner's loop or a runner's knot and all that stuff to help. I'm just letting you guys know that that's what it is. This is the insole right here. It's a uh, ortholite style. It's a uh, fairly dense. It's kind of like the darker blue stuff. So this is not a bad insole, but it's not a premium insole. So if you wanted to take this out, it's not glued down. You can easily swap this. You can try it with this insole first. And if you don't like it, then you can swap it if you want. Now, while this isn't a performance feature, it's just one of the small details on the shoe that I actually really loved. Uh, it's actually on the tip of the rubber. One has a basic Nike swoosh, which is typical. The other one, it says uh, established 1972. I just really like the little history nod right there. Also, this has nothing to do with performance either, but I love this little tag right here. And I love the Nike guy, the, the little face. It's not on that insole. It's actually on this one. I like the little wink. That's the swoosh. Make me feel good about getting some exercise. Then you'd love my Brooks. What do they say inside? I want to say it's one says run lucky, but because it's the St. Patrick's Day edition, it has a rainbow in the other one. Mm -hmm. It's just very cute. So they connect? No. Oh, well that would have been cool. That would have been cool. But still, it's just something fun in the morning when I go to put them on. Like the outside's already fun, but then as I'm sliding my feet in, I'm like, yeah, I am going to go run lucky. Yeah, no, I think that that's what I love the most about this is like, even if you were to wear down the graphic inside, which again is pretty typical, uh, they still have that little guy winking at you and it's placed in a way where he's looking at you as you're tying your shoe. So it's like, hey, have a good run today mm -hmm. or a good walk or whatever it is that you're doing. If you're going to get groceries, I hope that you make a meal. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. He just look happy. So like, I just like that. It's like getting met in the morning with like your dog or something. That, that dude's always happy to see you no matter what. Could have just barfed on the floor and he's like, hey, what's up, boss? I have just met you and I love you. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. Let us know what you think about these down below in the comment section. Congratulations to the Nike team for 40 years of the Pegasus. I think that that's pretty cool. Will the Air Jordan line make it to 40? Duh. You think yeah. so? They're at 37 already. You know they already have the 38, the 39, and probably the 40 design. This is true. I'm just saying. Something to leave comments with. You know what I mean? Get some engagement going for the algorithm. Will they make it to 45? And will they stop there? They should. They should, really. They should have stopped at 23, but whatever. But anyways, sound off below. Let us know. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. We'll catch you on the next one. So until then, have a good one.